Hello everyone, it's good to be back again and in today's session we will not just be focusing on red teaming uh, or offensive, we'll be looking at the bit of defensive as well. Um, this is something which um, can work for both um, offensive end and as well as the defensive end. We'll be using a tool called Bloodhound. We'll be using Bloodhound to set up Bloodhound. I'll show you how to set up Bloodhound in Kali Linux and also how to set up the Neo4j. Then also how to probably exploit, um, get uh, the uh, collector uh, imported into our target and use that to probably enumerate the Active Directory and um, see how we can from there push that back into our Kali Linux system and um, try to understand the Active Directory the way it is in terms of uh, how it's been built, what domain admins do we have, what groups do we have and all that stuff. Okay, enough with the chitty chatting. Let's get right into business as usual. So uh, first, over here, I've got Kali Linux running on uh, a VirtualBox VM. We're going to use the apt uh, get installed. We'll install Bloodhound and see if we can grab that quickly. Okay, whilst that will be installing, we will in the background set um, fire up the Windows target and try to see if we can exploit a vulnerability on that target, probably to gain a remote code execution. I already know that I know there is a vulnerability, or I know it's vulnerable to something, so I'm just going to save you that stress. Uh, remember, we have showcased um, the Windows Server 2008. I'm going to fire up that server then exploit a vulnerability on that server to gain um, remote code execution, which will now form the basics of our um, Bloodhound collection. Okay, I'll pause this video and get back to you in time. All right, so we have uh, <coughs> Bloodhound installed. Then also we've um, gained a, a session here on our target system, the Windows system. Then also we can see over here I closed the Bloodhound git repo. Then I have the collectors which is Azure Hound as well as the Sharp Hound. The Azure will be for the Azure Cloud. Then this will be for the local Active Directory on the server. Okay, so um, moving on from this point, what we're going to do is uh, we will try to set up Bloodhound properly. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to change into um, uh, user share new for j and create that library over there so we'll do the ch own uh, we'll give this over to the user kali so we can also run this as kali minus r kali then we'll pass the user share and new for j n e o for j okay that should be pretty fine then we will start the console running new for J. Console. Okay, if all things look okay, we should start building from that point. Okay, it's doing a bit of verification. Once that is done, then we'll be able to log in and um, um, probably set up credentials, using and password and other attributes which will be required for us to be using this thing uh, uh, more often. Okay, um, I'm just gonna wait for that. Um, when it's done, I'll come back to you guys. Okay, so it started. Um, we will copy the link and um, go and assess it, then set up the necessary uh, credentials. All right, so I'm gonna go over here in my browser and uh, access which is what we have over here so what we'll be doing here basically we'll set up a bit of uh, follow the instructions set up the credentials uh, then we should have this thing ready so we can see it's currently on the local host on port 7687 then the database so we can leave empty for default i think i'm going to leave that default authentication type is and password then we will set the username and password then we'll continue from here so you can see we're changing the um, default password. We will change the password, then we'll proceed from here. Okay, now that we have this completely done, let's go get into Bloodhound. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go over here to my terminal. I'm going to basically split this thing um, horizontal so I can do some um, real estate, screen real estate management here. So I'm going to just run Bloodhound to start it. 
then we will um, authenticate to this using the credentials which we have just created so the username is neo4j then the password which we set okay i'm just going to save this password so i don't have to repeat this over and over okay so i've got bloodhound uh, set up and you can see i'm in bloodhound so now we need to look for a way to move the collector over to our targets and see how we can use the collector to probably grab some stuff okay so i'm going to uh, go back to my terminal i'm basically going to minimize this thing and go back to my terminal here we have the active session so since it's WinRM, even WinRM, we can use the upload functionality to take those things uh, basically i will be taking the sharphound.exe since this is the exe version which i want to execute i'm going to just copy this then i'm going to see if i can use upload to upload this here directly so this is currently in the path uh let me see that path it's in up on my local system bloodhound uh, collector then um, we've got sharpound.exe let's see if we can actually upload that thing over there uh, upload successful verify that we can see it's right there so we can run this uh, since we know our target is already there sharpound um, And see if we can run this thing right here okay uh, there seem to be a little bit of issue but it seems like it's going to run we'll see if that runs successfully and uh, returns results for us usually it should return result if it doesn't we'll go find a way to probably grab an, uh, a normal RDP session and do this thing over there basically easy I think I'm just going to do an RDP session okay so we got a version that I think the other version had some bug issues so we're going to try to run this now and see if it works um, okay this seems to be working and the same to run pretty much fine uh, failed ping 26 host failed ping but I think we should have um, a bunch of stuff that we need to move over so we can see the CSV CSV and the bloodhound of bean will basically going to extract this file and move them to our local box so we can um, start using them to uh, lo upload them into bloodhound and start looking around to understand what the active directory looks like from our perspective so we've been able to use the upload <coughs> download functionality to download these files and we can view them right here in our um, local Kali box in the download on um, document sorry folder we can see the three collectibles so we're going to go into bloodhound and see if we can import these um and start you see we can import graphs or we can export graphs so we're going to import graphs let's see if we can go import all those stuff i think it's in the document we'll just see if we can select all of them at once or probably I'm not sure why it's not selecting all. I'm going to attempt to do that and just import it. Okay, so these are our collectors. Let's quickly upload them in and see what they look like in Bloodhound. We can use the upload um, data over here and navigate to where we have those collectibles and just select all of them. We'll throw them in Bloodhound and we'll wait for this data upload to finish. Then I'll come back to you guys. Okay, so all our uploads are done and um, we're just going to close this um, going to navigate over here we can start doing a bit of analysis probably find all the main admins it's going to start mapping based on the data we've supplied and we can see this is the domain cptsecure.org and we can start looking at critical details within the domain to understand like the domain SID, maybe the domain name, the available groups and also other critical details like the users within. Now we've got a bunch of uh, templates that we can work with here 
to enumerate even all the way to Kerberos interaction. We can find members of a high value group. We can start mapping the CS monk, which probably you had seen me exploited recently. We can see S monk over there. It's got a link. This is S monk, and um, it's linked to uh, administrator group. And also we have this other user over there. I'm just going to uh, see if I can take this out. So we can have a good screen background user and a smart user. The vote belongs to administrator. And we can also see smonk is in domain admin. So obviously, if I want to get a domain admin, I can go via the background user, which you already have access to, and all the way down to domain admin. Now we can do all that critical or more detailed analysis here. Uh, we can even define custom queries if we wish. We can find sure there's part two on constraint delegation. Um, which we'll be looking at later uh, uh, in our series. We can obviously see the GP links here. We can as well see the Vagrant core domain controller here. We can see a bunch of all these users that we can probably computer and group, which we can probably find out a possible user which we want to go via. Total, there are about 273 users. We can look at all of them if we wish. Now, this is pretty. Um, some this is something that is pretty handy not just for uh, red team or red teamers blue teamers also you can use this to understand what your active directory really looks like uh, so i usually advise that you go around something like pink castle or bloodhound in your environment to critically understand uh, the structure of your active directory that way it makes it easy for you to define security from a better perspective because you now have visibility to know uh, which users are critical users who have rights and access to restricted zones or permissions that they do not require to function. Then you can start stripping or streamlining or stripping off all those permissions and rights to be, have a better secure environment. Visibility is key. Okay, I'm going to stop this recording session here. I hope um, this content is going to help you uh, better secure environment. Environment. And I hope um, if it does, please do like, subscribe and leave um, the comments. I've been receiving wonderful comments and I really appreciate that. Thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next recording. Have a nice day. Bye.